Hello there and welcome to the Bicycle Diaries and welcome to week 8 of my Mallorca training plan. Yes, I can officially call it that now because my very good friends over at Cardio Sport have very kindly agreed to sponsor the trip. So James from Cardio Sport and I will be flying down to Mallorca at the end of September and we'll be down there for a week doing all of the regular routes and rides that I've done in the past. Now it will be James's first trip to Mallorca so I hope he, uh, he enjoys it down there. Uh, plus uh, I do also have plans to ride up Sacalobra for the very first time. Even though it will be my seventh trip to the island I've never actually ridden up Sacalobra and that's basically because it's quite a tough ride from where we stay in Alcudia. I've got a little trick up my sleeve that's going to enable us to do this absolutely iconic climb and if you want to know what that is you're going to have to wait until the vlogs come out in September October time. Last week the weather was making cycling very difficult indeed even though I did four rides two of those were indoors on the turbo trainer so hopefully this week the weather will improve and I'll be able to go out and do some more proper road rides including my longest ride of the season so far at 50 kilometers. And with that the grand totals for the year so far are 537 kilometers ridden, 24 and a half hours of seat time and 3158 meters climbed. Now this means I'm approximately a third of my way through my base miles. I've still got about a thousand kilometers to ride or about another 40 hours of seat time but hopefully I'll be able to get out this week and make a significant dent in that. Let's start making that dent by doing the longest ride of the year so far. Today's ride is going to be quite a challenge. According to my route that I've created on the Karoo, it's going to be about 53 kilometers. And initially, we'll be doing the little back roads around places like Wickham and Swanmore. And then the challenge is going to come later in the ride when we do the two big climbs. The first one is Beacon Hill, and then we'll be going up Old Winchester Hill and then down into the village of Cranfield and then home. As you can probably see the weather's not as bad as it has been recently at least it's dry and that's saying something the forecast is for only a 20% chance of rain but uh, I won't believe that until I get home nice and dry the big challenge is the wind though it's, um, it's a 25 km an hour wind coming from the west but I have done the old school thing of hopefully riding into the wind at the start of the ride and it will more or less push me back on the way home. I've only got one objective for today's ride and that's to just do it 
and if I need to do anything to help me to achieve that so taking it nice and easy up the climbs using lower gears pedaling slowly whatever I just want to get back home today and say yes I've done my longest ride of the year so far just on about 20 kilometers into the ride now passing through the village of Wickham and on the first of what I would call a little leg loosener climb about 1500 meters with an average gradient of about 3% get home in hopefully about an hour's time one of two things will have happened I'll either get back and be completely knackered in which case that's a message to me that I need to do some more work or I'll get back and the ride will be relatively easy in which case it will be a fairly big mental obstacle overcome either way it's going to be a massive test of fitness today. Just about halfway around now. And on the one hand, things are getting slightly easier as I'm on the more sheltered part of the route. But these little back lanes around Swanmore is where it starts to get difficult. These lanes themselves are very deceptive. They might look flat, but at the moment it's about six, seven percent. I'm just chugging away my lowest gear. Once I've got through this, I've got the two bigger hills to climb, and then hopefully it's pretty much downhill all the way home. This, boys and girls, is why this part of the ride is so tough. As you can see, we're quite high and we've had to climb up here. This is actually one of the highest points in Hampshire. And in fact, one of the few places higher than this is where we're going to cycle next. I'm a glutton for punishment. Welcome to the climb of Beacon Hill, just outside of Corehampton, uh, and it's a little bit deceptive. Starts off fairly gently, uh, and then it ramps up to about five, six, seven percent, and continues on for about two and a half kilometres. I'm just going to pace myself and take it nice and easy. That's the first of today's big climbs done. We'll descend Wheelie down and then we'll start climbing up Old Winchester Hill. And if anything, it's even tougher than Beacon Hill.
both major climbs done now. Just got this last little leg loosener on the top of this ridge and then it's descending Mercury into Clanfield and then about six kilometres home. On reflection, I was certainly a lot closer to the tired end of that effort spectrum than I was to the easy end. By about kilometre 35, so just as I was climbing up Beacon Hill, uh, I could feel that I was already getting a bit tired. And then when I hit the climb of Old Winchester Hill, which is a lot steeper and a bit longer, uh, I could really feel that I just didn't have it in my legs. So although my cardiovascular system was holding up, my heart rate was fine and my breathing was fine, my legs started to feel a bit heavy. So this is where I do need to do a little bit of work. Now that said, the Isle of Wight Randonnée is 110 kilometers round and the, this ride is only about 53 kilometers. So if the Isle of Wight Randonnée was next week, I think I would fail miserably. All in all, I did three rides this week. There was this one, which incidentally was also the longest ride of the year so far. And then I did a turbo session in the garage where I climbed up a virtual cap for mentor in Mallorca. And then on Friday, I rode down to Hailing Island. So that's 41 kilometers or so. And the thing I really noticed on that ride was my cadence. Now, I don't know if there was a fault with the sensor or somebody had slipped some angel dust into my cycling computer, but my cadence was up around 95 revs per minute and it was relatively easy to do that despite the headwind and the adverse conditions. Now I hope that this is all down to all of the, the, the turbo work that I've been doing and the high cadence that I've been maintaining while I've been doing that. So the numbers for this week are, I've ridden 112 kilometers, I've got five and a quarter hours of seat time, and I've climbed 710 meters. So if we go over to Strava and have a look at the fitness score, you can see that when I did my longest ride, it was 38. And then when I did my turbo session, it was still 38. And then when I did my hailing run, it was 41. Now 112 kilometers for the week isn't a bad total, but then to be honest, it's not that great either. This time of year, I'd be looking to do maybe 150, 160 kilometers in a week. And I think that's going to have to be the target for next week's cycling. So fingers crossed that the weather will play ball. It's not looking too bad at the moment. So um, I'll be able to go out and do perhaps three or four actual proper road rides rather than supplementing them with uh, turbo training sessions in the garage where the kilometers aren't that high and yeah just keep chipping away at my base miles and finally a massive thank you to cardio sport for supporting the trip to mallorca now there's a definite date in the calendar it just gives my training a lot more focus thanks for watching